Hey miners, today we're going to be checking out how to make a VM inside of Unraid. But before we get into that, here's a word from our sponsor. Today, FluxPools.net would like to announce a miner appreciation program where they will be giving one lucky miner $1,000 in Flux every month for the next 12 months. Flux Labs is operated by the people from the Flux team, and their main goal is to provide a safe and transparent mining experience. While the Flux project does not take directly from the pool, FluxPools.net does give a portion of their fees back to the Flux project because they understand that both the project and the miners are what make this pool possible. Entering the $1,000 monthly giveaway is easy, and here's how. Mine at the pool and maintain at least a 90% uptime for the first month and 95% uptime for the following months over the next 30 day period with at least one GPU. Yep, that's it. The giveaway prize will be sent directly to the mining address and nowhere else, so please do not mine directly to an exchange. Rewards may be lost as a result. This is all on top of their normal weekly loyalty program and starting on August 19th, all the parallel asset fees will be cut in half. So please check out fluxpools.net for a great place to mine. So today we're gonna be looking at setting up a VM for the Unraid, but I feel like I didn't explain some of the benefits of running a Flux node in Unraid. So I will be covering that today. First, we're going to take a look at the Cumulus node hardware requirements here. We're over here at uh, runonflux.io uh, slash flux nodes. And as you can see, it is going to take two cores, four threads, eight gigs of RAM, 220 gigs of SSD NVMe, either, either or. Um, you have to have a certain amount of write speed, uh, which is 180 megabits per second. Uh, 240 EPSs, which is, I believe, the calculations. I might be wrong on that. But the most important part about the Cumulus node, and a lot of people get confused on this once again, is like their internet speeds, right? It needs to be 25 meg up and down, which means most people have download, but the problem is the upload speed. So please benchmark your internet before proceeding. Let's go ahead and head over to Unraid, and let me show you some of the benefits of having an Unraid server versus running a Raspberry Pi or maybe just setting up one node on like a mini PC. So let's go over to Unraid. Okay, so we're over here at our Unraid, and some of the benefits of let's say you had a spare computer like this, and you have all these extra cores and extra threads, right? So you have six cores and 12 threads. You could actually set up VMs to and this is how you're going to run your flux node by the way is with a a vm or virtual machine it's pretty much think of it as like a computer with inside another computer right what you're going to do is, is you're going to set aside dedicated resources for each vm so we need to do two cores and four threads so we will dedicate two cores and four threads and that will still leave you four cores and eight threads to you know possibly have another node right so you can run more than one node on this particular setup so it could be really beneficial right now this is just the test one like we've been using on my personal one i do have a 10600k but i'm an upgrade up to an i9 10850k so i'll have 10 cores and 20 threads so because i plan on running several nodes besides running nodes right you can also come over here to their uh their apps so once you download the little plugin to get the app started, there is tons of apps. There's like, you can, you come over here to Minecraft. They have all these tons of different mine, look, Vault Hunters. They have tons of different Minecraft servers, right? You know, you could type in, you could type in Rust. So now we can run a Rust server. You could, you could have, there's unlimited things that you can do. And these are uh, Dockers. So you would just install these um, as like they would be their own virtual machine and then they would run this server. You would have your own private Rust server or private Vault Hunter server or whatever. Now, another good thing that you could use this for is a NAS, right? Which is network attached storage. So for like me, I, over here, it's and this is just a test, right? But if say this was yours, you could use this two terabyte as like, your home storage, you know what I mean? To like put all your photos in or games or movies or whatever, right? I know some people have Plex servers on Unraid where they have tons of terabytes and they store all these movies 
on their Unraid. So there's tons and tons of utility for Unraid, tons of things that you could do. So it's very versatile versus just being just a flux node. Just to confirm again, you can create several flux nodes on one machine. I do know somebody in our community that has about five nodes on one Unraid system and they still have room for more. So some you don't have to use a spare computer. You could try to find like a cheap um, server, like maybe an older Xeon where they have lots and lots of cores. So that would be really useful too. So now that I've kind of gone over what you can use Unraid for, some of its utilities and you know use, uses and all those other things, right? So today I'm gonna show you how to start your VM for your Flux node. Um, you're going to need to get a copy of the Ubuntu uh, live server, which I will leave a link to the Google Drive so that way you guys could download it. So just to show you, because I don't want to show you guys all my stuff on my Google Drive, but this is the Ubuntu um, server that you're going to need, Ubuntu uh, 20.04.3, and this is the live server um, image file. I will, like I said, I'll leave a link to the Google Drive so you guys could download this yourselves. So once you have this downloaded, um, the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to start the array. So every time to get Unraid to to get Unraid to work, you need to start the array, which is to start these drives. So we click start. Okay, now that we have that, you're going to have to go to, so you need to come over here to the control panel, and then you're gonna click on programs, okay? And then you're gonna see turn Windows features on and off, okay? What we need to enable is SMB. And what that's gonna allow us to do is communicate from our desktop computer over to our Unraid system right because without this you won't be able to move files which means that you wouldn't be able to move the ubuntu file onto the unraid which is what you need to do as well as you have to turn this feature on if you're trying to also use this as a nas because you won't be able to move files back and forth freely so we're going to click on this right here and once you click on that this will this screen will come up turn off windows features on and off you're going to come all the way down to SMB direct and SMB 1.0. Now I've already enabled this, but you guys will have to enable these. And most likely, I do believe when you do enable this, you will have to restart your computer. So just be warned for that. Once you enable that, the next step you're going to have to do is, is you're going to kind of have to come over to shares. And then you're going to need to come over here to the uh, ISOS. Okay, and then once you do that, this right here will automatically be set to no. You're gonna wanna click yes. So as soon as you do that, you wanna hit apply. And now it's starting, it's gonna start sharing that, that, that folder, right? Because this is the folder that we need to put our uh, Unraid Ubuntu in. So this way it's shared with us, okay? So now, you're gonna to have to come over here to your, your file explorer. So we're gonna come back and click on network. And if you did the SMB properly, right, you will see, because see this is our test Unraid right here. So it's here. Now you see the ISOS uh, folder. So you're gonna open the folder. Now I've already added the file, but you would, you would just drag and drop the file. like. I will show you and demonstrate that just to prove to you that it works. So we will delete this file, okay? And then we will, we will add it again. So you can see it's transferring at gigabit uh, speeds because I have, I have gigabit throughout my house. Okay, now that we have the ISO image copied onto our shared drive, okay? The next thing we need to do is, is we need to come over to our VMs so we're going to come over here to our VM section. And then we're going to click Add VM. We're going to come over to Ubuntu. We're going to click the Auto Start right here to enable this. We're then going to do the last couple cores here. I, uh, I was told to leave this one um, as free as possible because it's for Unraid itself. Um, and huge shout out to Mad Electron and Tains. 
they've helped me a lot to learn about Unraid and Linux. So, and how to, you know, install the Flux OS and get the nodes going. Really appreciate those guys. So now we need to update our memory to 8192 because we need eight gigs of RAM. On machine, we're gonna go up to the i440FX-6.2. On the BIOS, we're gonna change it to CBIOS. And when you click on the image, you'll be able to put on your Ubuntu image. And then under install CD, uh, CD-ROM bus, you're gonna choose SCSI. Under the VDisk location, you're gonna choose your cache because that's your, that's your SSD because you can't use the mechanical drive. And we're say 200, 230 G, make sure to use capital G with that. And then primary VDisk, VDisk bus, we're gonna choose SCSI. And then that's pretty much it for the, un, the VM setup initially, right? For this section. If you get a KVN error, uh, if it gives you like, uh, if, if, if it's an error, when you try to hit create here and it gives you, says something at the end of it about KVN, you'll need to enable virtualization in your BIOS. Now, every motherboard, Intel, AMD, different manufacturers, they have different um, settings for this. This AMD board was in the CPU settings. So the Intel was complete opposite. It actually had its own tab outside of the CPU to enable this for virtualization. Consult your motherboard manufacturer's um, instruction manual to see how to enable virtualization for your particular motherboard. I'm not gonna show that because there's so many different variations. So just know some come enabled, some don't. You will have to enable virtualization in order to get this to work. We're going to click uh, Create. So now it's starting up the, uh, the VM here. So now what we're gonna do is, is obviously gonna choose your language. I'm gonna use English. We're going to update to the newest installer. We'll give it a quick second. I have gigabit, so I have really fast internet, so it should just be a second. So on this screen, you wanna hit done. And then you wanna hit done again. If you have a proxy, I'm not setting up a proxy, so done, um, done. You're going to scroll down to done. And then this is this part you need to pay attention to is right here where it has this amount of disk drive space. It's saying it's only going to be 100 gigs. We want to come over here and edit this with our keyboard. And then we're going to do the 227, I think, was the maximum that we could do on it. We're going to hit save. Okay. And then we're going to click uh, go down to done. And then yes, now you need to set up your username and everything like that. So you can configure the SSH access, which SSH means you're pretty much going to remote in to the VM itself from your Windows computer. This way you could actually install the Flux OS. So you will need to set this up. Uh, I'm just going to put, you know, mining king, set your password, make sure you write these things down. Um, so after you have this all set up, you then want to click done. So up here it says you could choose to install open SSH server package to enable secure remote access to your server. So you're going to want to do this and then you want to click done. And then you want to come down here to done. And now it's going to pretty much install your, uh, Ubuntu live server set up so just i'll catch you guys in a few moments and this should be close to the end of our ubuntu uh server install so when you guys are done installing your your vm it should look something like this um when when you get done doing the initial install it'll give you an option to reboot and just go down to reboot now and it should come up like this if you get some cd rom errors just hit enter and it'll go through the boot up system. And then this will be the final screen that you guys will come up with. So guys, we have successfully started our Ubuntu, you know, uh, server essentially. So now, so now we have successfully started our Ubuntu server. Everything is ready to go. We will do the next step in the next video, which would be in about a week. Um, 
So I'm just trying to really make sure I get a lot of these details. I'm sorry I didn't record the part about having to reboot it, but I figure that's really self-explanatory. In the in the putty screen, um, when you uh, remote in, and if you ever need to remote VNC, all you have to do is just click on your Ubuntu and do VNC remote, and this screen will pop back up, just so you guys know. So once again, reboot now. If you get a CD-ROM like mounting error, just hit enter, and it'll come up to the screen. So then you'll be fine. All right? So a little heads up. If, when, when, when we go to the next step, you're going to want to lock up your 1,000 flux, right? Because it takes a 1,000 flux to make your node. And you need to send it to... It doesn't matter what address you send it to, but I would I would make a another address and just call it like nodes or or some or whatever you want, right? But you need to send a thousand flux exactly. Don't worry about the transaction fees because it doesn't take transaction fees because it'll recognize that when you send the thousand flux that you're really trying to do is start a node. So as soon as you do a thousand flux even, right? No transaction fees, just a thousand even. It will. You'll, you'll come over to your Flux OS dashboard and then you'll see confirmation numbers. I'll show you guys that in the next video, but you'll want to send your thousand Flux, you know, before we start the next section because that part's gonna be really crucial because it, it takes a hundred, a hundred confirmations, which is about two minute block time uh, per block. So that's 200 minutes. So it takes a couple of hours, right, to be able to do 100 confirmations on the Flux network. So just realize that you're going to want to do your confirmations in advance because it does take a substantial amount of time. That's the part that you'll be waiting on. You need the confirmations before you, that you can even engage the node. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you guys have some questions, you guys can... Uh, find me in the Misfit Mining Discord. Try not to ask too many questions on YouTube because it's it just starts getting really lengthy in the comments. Come find me in my Discord and ask me questions about how to start the VM if you guys have some trouble or reach out to Matt Electron or Tains. They're also really knowledgeable guys. I hope this video was helpful. I will be doing, like I said, the next step, which will be the final step, which is installing the flux os and getting the actual node on to the server all right guys this is the mining king giving you the most hashes and i'll see you next time